for sure. You know, that's one thing we've talked about Van Vo a lot. One thing that made me really start liking him. Hold on. One thing that really started making me like him, he came in the first fight I saw him, he was one in 10 as a professional, but I could see by him warming up and bouncing around, he was fired up and he thought he was gonna win this fight. He was fighting a very good fighter, undefeated, and came in and knocked him out in the first round. Nick Rodriguez certainly has the boxing trunks, right? Yeah, he does. He's circled it off to his left there. That's indicative of that boxing training, but you have to be careful doing that in MMA. Circle right towards the power of Jeff Mack. What kind of adjustments do you have to make coming from boxing into MMA, Huge. Chris? I mean, there's a lot of difficult distance issues you have to deal with. Those kicks, those takedowns, everything's different. You know, a boxing, you, when you get in close, they can tie up and that's it. You can't continue to take them down here. That's just a start. You can't let them tie you up. So a big difference and with that and with distance. In and of itself, the boxing stance is just inherently more bladed because you don't have to worry about your legs being cut down by kicks. You don't have to worry about being taken down and crossing your feet. As, as a good boxer, you know, almost you, you leave that lead leg out there a little bit more like you're talking about for that kick. Rodriguez looked like he did connect with that overhand right. Yeah, I think he was able to sneak the left uppercut in as well. So if you're Jeff Mack, what you don't want to do is just kind of paw that jab out there against a professional boxer. 100% because they're just looking to come over top with something like that. So you have to throw a jab out there. You have to throw it fast and bring it back just as fast. Another thing, I don't want to see you just standing there throwing a, a, a slow jab or any kind of a jab right there. You have to come behind it with something else. Or you got to be moving in a circle and continuing to throw jab. How much does Mac want to focus on kicks? Uh, I think I'd put a definite more emphasis on it. Once again, we talked about it earlier. I don't want to see any naked kicks. I like to see a couple jabs followed by a kick. Yeah, and Mac is actually throwing the naked kicks right now. He sees he's popping that that right jab out there, but it's it's not a true jab. It's no, he, he's just pawing at it, and, yes. and he's not really making his Ooh. opponent respect it. Good over, good good right hand. Yeah, it seems like so far Mac has been trying to throw power, but that one he just sharply put it right down the middle. And I am loving the left hand of the body that I'm seeing from. Uh, Rodriguez right there. Every now and then, that's a great punch that you can land if you can hit that liver. That's the end of the night sometimes. One of the uh, great fighter I used to like watching, Mickey Ward had a devastating left hand of the body. About Jeff Mack coming with the stiff left hook, right head kick. If you are going to throw straight naked kicks, I like seeing teeps you know, with body punch right there. Yeah, we heard that right in front of us. Chris Lytle, how much do you love body shots? Those are my favorite punches of all time. It feels so good when you can start landing in volume and freeze your opponent on the cage and just step off to the side. And boom, and land then they're, it. And they're dig on it when knees. you say you yeah. dig it. You dig one of those. I don't care when you're sparring, you're working out with people, nothing makes you feel as good as you hit a guy in the body and he, and he takes a knee. Yep, he takes that <laughs> knee and then you turn around and walk away. Yeah, you just go, okay, you're done. Next. This is, of course, our first professional fight of the night. That's going to be a change from three, three minute rounds to three five minute rounds mm -hmm. since these are professionals. Luckily, both these guys have had a few fights. They're, they should be used to that pace by now. And, they, and you can tell they don't look like they're, you know, they're saving a little bit of the energy. Good, good body. Yeah, they know that they've got a long way to go. Good, double that up, perfect. No, don't stand in front. One minute. Go, good. Good straight left there from Jeff Mack. Move, move, circle. For Rodriguez, that body again. Rodriguez continually trying to throw that left hand of the body. Yeah, do we think that he's able to get a Rodriguez with a kick? Yeah, that's surprising. 
Do we think that Rodriguez is able to get enough power on that left hand to the body to to drop Jeff Mack? Uh, I think especially, you know, with gloves like this, I think it helps. The smaller the go glove, the more ability, that, that it's a more concentrated blow. The more, like a boxing glove, it kind of disseminates that around more uh, of the side. When you hit that right in the right spot with that little glove, you don't have to have as much power. If it hits in the right spot, I think the person is really hurt. Yeah. I would love to see Jeff Mack stick that jab out and make it actually do some work. Yeah, I mean, throw the jab and then throw the behind, but make it meaningful. Every punch you want to throw wants to be meaningful. Woo! Little yeah, after the bell there, but they're cool. You know, Rodriguez has a little mouse under, it looked like his, uh, his right eye. Jeff Mack just gave us a look over here, a nod. Looked like he's all right. He did eat one at the right at the bell. One more difference from amateur to professional. Amateurs have 90 seconds to rest. These professionals have to fight longer and less rest. These pros only get 60 seconds to rest. Yeah, and you might not think, I mean, it might seem like a long time. Trust me, it's pretty fast when you're My in there like that. Gosh. The break's up already? Yeah. And I'm not ready. Hmm. Better get ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. There's nothing more frustrating when you're still tired and you look over and the other guy's bouncing around on his feet like, oh, this is going to be a long round. So who are we scoring that round for, guys? Uh, I'm probably going to say Mac in that one. I mean, I thought it was a pretty close round, but um, I thought he'd do a little bit more all around. I think so as well. I'm giving it to Mac. I think, uh, I think we'll see Jeff come out and try to make it a point to get to the ground on this round. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see that last time. Yeah, maybe he, maybe he just had a point to come out. You're right. Try out his, his hands and his feet. I'm gonna stand up with the stand-up guy and then show him that he's not gonna dominate that position. Show yeah. the referee, show the judges, show the fans, and then I can do what I want the next one. Good knee coming up the middle from Jeff Mack after that over right. I got him a little McGroin. He said he's fine, though. You shake those off before, Chris? They're like, you can take five minutes if you want. You're like, I'm fine. A absolutely. Because usually my plan is always, I'm in better shape than this guy. I'm pushing the pace. I don't want him to have a five-minute break. I'm going right now. Yeah. So that's usually my plan. But it's at Nick Rodriguez pushing. right there. He, Gary Copeland just asked him, you right? He said, he said, yeah, I'm not one of those dudes. That's what Let's I heard. Let's get after <laughs> it. That's pretty awesome. I love it. Yeah, he's Nick Rodriguez is making me a Ro fan. Rodriguez didn't even want any break, I don't believe. I think Rodriguez was like, no, I don't even need a break. Let's just yeah. keep going. Yeah, I remember one fight I had, I was I had to stop it three times for shots to the groin. That's just so terrible. And they, and they still never gave me a point for it. I was a little upset with it. Man. Got a funny story with that too. By the third time, I remember I was fighting at the Palms. It was a pretty small venue, not a lot of people there, and really, really quiet because they gave me five minutes. I'm walking around for a minute. The third one was pretty bad. Yeah. And at some point, somebody yelled out. It was real quiet. Lido, you got 18 kids. Don't worry about it. And I kind of <laughs> started laughing and pointing him to him and said, "All right, let's go, referee. Let's oh start this one." Correct me up. You don't have 18 though. How no, many kids no, you have? I got four, but it, okay. I, it was just the point he yeah, said. It yeah. was hilarious, man. Like everybody heard it and started That's laughing. I, just, I did the same. I laughed and said, "All right, let's fight." <laughs> A little Superman punch there from Jeff Mack. Jab to the body right there. I'd like to see him finishing with like some kicks after he's throwing those those punches with it from Matt. Because once again, if you fight a boxer and he's not really focused on the kicking, those legs are open Ooh, right that there. That one landed to the body. I said I am a big fan of him throwing kicks, but I won't. Oh, this is this might be over. Jeff Mack needs to get on it right now. He Good dropped stand him. Up. Good stand. He dropped yeah. him with a big right hand. I, if I'm back, I need to get after it. 
For sure. Like I said, right now to me would be a perfect time to land some devastating leg kicks. I don't yeah. think he's looking for them. I'm throwing a couple punches and coming back with a big right. Would it be Switch safe kick. to say Mac used those kicks to set up that big right? 100%. That's what he should be doing. He should be throwing some hands, coming back with feet, and coming back with more hands. Ooh, good jab to the body there from Jeff Mack. Hurt right there, guys. Another over right. Just and a quick overhand right. And Mac is coming with the left hook behind it, which is... That's, that's going to be the difference right there. If yes. he can land that right hand and follow with the left hook, that's how he can get the knockout right there. Good left to the body there. We've seen so many times from Rodriguez. Definitely feels like his most effective punch. Oh, that's what I'm We've talking about right yes. there. We've been waiting for I'm that I'm surprised all he hasn't. A few of those could change the fight right there. How much does that hurt, guys? Uh, you've been frogged in the leg. I mean, if you get kicked there probably two to three times that good, that could end the fight. <laughs> yeah, these are ripping. There's nothing like it when you go to step, and every every step hurts so bad. Like, oh, I can't, I can't stand up anymore. Good jumping knee for Jeff Mack. Sounded like it landed. Oh, those oh boy. are killing them. Those are devastating. That's what we were talking about earlier. Oh! Ooh! I can't. Like this. I'm Jeff Mack. I just keep throwing here. That's it. Fight's over. Fight's over. Good. Good stop it. Good shit, baby. Appears to be a boxer against an MMA fighter. And Mack, as the fight went further into the fight, he utilized those leg kicks to set up the big strikes and then eventually the devastating knee. Looks like we got the replay for the, I hope for the knee. Let's see. Oh, yeah, just Oh touched. my God. Perfect, great job there. And this is the thing there, we saw. Here comes the knee. Watch. Kick. Boom. The left knee wow. straight up. Wow. Beautiful knee. striker this time I reckon very good now did that give any uh, unique challenges he seemed to be like a pure boxer uh, nothing but hands coming out very difficult you seem like you did good as a boxer was that kind of game out there and out boxing? oh yeah it was a game plan uh, my good friend and teammate out here Cal and Cum 50 Cal is a great amateur boxer and uh, he's been in there beating on me along with uh, smoking Joe Pig he's out there somewhere uh, so I've had, I've had some good training partners to uh, beat up on me and get me ready for uh, for this fight tonight. So I feel good. You look great out there. What can we see from you next? Who you want to fight? Anybody in particular? Or what, what's your game plan? Man, I, uh, the game plan was to take another little lapse, or take some time off. I had a one-year-old son, or he just turned one in November. So uh, priorities changed a little bit, but I wanted to get this fight in and put on a good show for everybody. So I hope I did that, guys. Thank you. Certainly did. Congratulations. Great fight. Thank you.
You think these people traveled all the way from Tennessee? Man, the support here for Mike. Gentlemen, you got your instructions in the back. Protect yourself at all time. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up now. Let's do this. We are live here at the Dayton Convention Center in Dayton, Ohio at HR MMA 113. We are part of the B2 Fighting Series. I hate watching my friends fight. <laughs> Every time. It's always better when they win. Yes. Man, a lot of explosiveness right there. Yeah, both these guys are fast twitch. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Good kick. Wow. Good jab kick there from Mike. Kind of weird. These guys both look like they're already got a good pace set and everything for being their first professional fight. You know, it seemed like both their debuts and they already seem pretty well adjusted. Mike just tried to rip an over elbow. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. I mean, everything he's throwing right now has bad intentions on it. That's the, one of the things I love so much about Mike is he comes in and sets the tone. You know, just we've seen a leg kick from both guys right now. Think of the difference between the one that Ferraris threw and the one Mike Douglas threw. Right. Ferraris is doing a good job of quickly slipping his head off center, though. Jab hook. Oh, big punch. Oh, go straight for this takedown. Lifts him up with ease right there. That was a, once again, we talked about the fast twitch muscle. Looks like it's a very explosive move right there. Yeah, it looked like the overhand right. Oh, wow. So Almost close. a great reversal right there. Looks like the overhand right was able to land there for Ferraris, which actually stunned Mike a little bit. Mm -hmm. What does Douglas want to do on the bottom here? Does he want to try to get half guard and start to better his position? Uh, one, the first thing he's got to do is get that right arm out from underneath the legs. He's got that trap that makes it almost impossible to defend punches right there. So he's got to get that arm out, move his hips out, get on the right hip as far out as he can to move that leg out to rake and regard. I'm really impressed with the explosiveness of Golden right there. Not only the explosiveness, but he seems like he knows where he, he's going with the explosiveness. Some guys just explode and just never don't know where the bodies are going to end up, but he seems like he knows exactly where he wants Michael to go. Is Golden working on? Mike has an arm isolated here from the bottom. Maybe a Doris if he can improve his position. Oh, but Golden beautiful job spin. right there. Once again, he used that explosive movement right there to yeah. get the full mount right there. He's got great bind the legs in. Technical mount for Golden. Nice scramble by Douglas to get out of that. Very good. Love it. That's where you're talking about the higher level. They're not just exploding at all times. They wait till the exact right moment and then they explode. Exactly what we saw right there. Okay, Douglas needs to be careful. He's getting a little wild with his punches. He's reaching a little bit too much, and he's going to open himself up for a counter punch right there. He's not careful. Both guys kind of probing right here. Looking for those openings they were seeing earlier. That's yeah. what the first part of the round was about, finding those openings. Now it's about exploiting those openings. I would love to see Mike go back to the hook leg kick. Huh. It looks like he... he Ooh, big man. Right yes! Hand, big right hand, but right into it. Man. Man. Golden's got some explosive takedown ability. Yeah. He just it seems like he just needs to get a hold of you. Yeah, he picks him up pretty much at will and threw him down. Mike's got a good guard here. Yeah. See if he's able to work to improve something. Working those arms up. We talked about it during the last card, guys. You're making your pro debut. You can now use elbows. Yeah, and you really haven't seen that come into play yet. I guess Douglas did attempt an elbow early. But yeah. for the most part, not a lot of elbow action so far. 
Good circle off to the right there from Ferraris Golden. Good powerful kick once again. Good hit. Oh. Hopefully it didn't hurt his foot too bad. I think he might have broke his foot. Maybe his shin fights over a while. Uh, I don't know what happened. Is that an kick? Anderson Silva type deal? I don't Is it think a cramp? so. I don't think so. I think he looks like he hurt his bone in his foot. Huh? Looks like they're pointing to the foot saying it looks like he broke it. You're all right, Mike. You're okay, brother. You're okay. Oh yeah, right, for sure. You can see the bone broken right there. Hopefully it's not oh. a. Maybe it's doesn't look like it's a dislocation. Got There's a replay, replay here. right there. He Looks. kicked the foot and just he kicked the knee and looked like it landed there immediately. We got Another the replay, replay here right again. Here. Watch this replay. He throws a right kick. Looks like it lands around the knee. And immediately it's swollen. I don't know if it's broken. If that's a break or what that is. You can see it right in front of his very. It's really bad. <laughs> You can tell it's very uh, deformed right there. I'm not sure if it's 100% a break um, or if that is like a dislocation. You all right, Mike? You all right, bro? You all right, brother? You okay? Relax. Relax, bro. You know, it almost appears to be just a huge hematoma. Or, or you know how that happens sometimes when people swell up because I don't think it didn't look like a break. It was too. The doctor just said I would say it's broke. Okay. It does. It, I mean, it just it was right. swell even yeah. because it did, I mean it didn't look like it was like a it, compound. Like it wasn't just the bone. There was definite swelling right away. It may be swelling on top of a break. I hate that so much for Mike. Very but cool feature that we were having Chris Lytle go in and interview these guys, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we love. It. Getting, uh, the fighters love it. Yes. I tell Chris that all the time. Every one of these fighters loves when Chris commentates and then here inter interviews them. Jerry Poe has called a stop to this fight at 4 minutes and 51 seconds. Declaring the winner by TKO due to injury, Ferraris Golden I feel good. Um, I'm sorry I had to end that way, man. Dude was a tough competitor. I was looking forward to going all three rounds. You know, I wanted to test myself, you know. It's a big transition from amateur to pro, so. Um, thank you guys for giving us the opportunity. This is only my third year into this sport, so I'm just trying to fill some gaps in and just improve every day. You look great out there. This was your first fight at 155. Is that where you're going to remain, you think? I usually fight at my walk around 70. This was the first time I ever had to cut, so it was definitely hard, but it'll, it'll get easier. I want to thank my coach, Gary Young, my demolition fight team. I want to thank my guys in Uniontown, my, the wrestlers at Notre Dame College in Cleveland, the University of Finley wrestlers. Thank all you guys, man. I appreciate you. Hey, you look great out there, one and oh now. What's next for you? Who do you want to fight next? And what's what's on the docket for you? What can we see from you? Bit, bit plans, bit plans. Uh, I'm going to continue to travel and train, and Lord's willing to be Khabib. <laughs> well, hey, we love having you on a B2 Fight Series. Thank you, and congratulations on your first victory.